And I did anything you want me to tell me how. You know you're in love. Why I treat you like you do and you're such a good man. <clears throat> oh, my favorite. Uh, let me say, for I know most of y'all have heard by now that our sister, Tina Turner, hmm, Annie Mae Bullock, has made her transition today. I mean, uh, May 23rd, actually. Um, Grammy Award singer, performer, basically. And to me, the closest thing to her is Beyonce. Everybody gets reincarnated. Just like when you hear Sarah Vaughn, you think of Anita Baker. Beyonce and Tina Turner are a lot alike. And, um, wow. You know, she had been sick for a while. A lot of people thought that we would lose her, I think, last year. As, um, she really went ill, was in a coma. Uh, so she had a lot of adversity in the last couple of years that, um, I personally am some that she hung on this long. So, for those of y'all who don't know, you, you must have been sleeping under a rock if you don't. Uh, she was born Anime Bullock on November 26, 1939 in Nutbush, Tennessee. Her parents, Zoe and Zemma Bullock, were poor sharecroppers who split up and left Anna Mae and her sister to be raised by their grandmama. When her grandmother died in the early 50s, Anna Mae moved to St. Louis to be with her mother. Barely in her teens, Anna Mae, who sang in the children's choir, quickly immersed herself in St. Louis R&B scene, spending much of her time at Club Manhattan. Uh, it was there in 1956 that she met rock and roll pioneer Ike Turner, who often played at the club with the Kings of Rhythm. Soon, <laughs> she was performing with the group as Little Ann, and she quickly became the highlight of their shows. So, I believe she's, she was very young when she started. She was uh, start performing with them. Um, and Miss Robbie, I'm sure, from uh, Sweetie Pies, she could attest to that or talk about a lot of stuff that went on during that time. Because I know her memory of their time together and Ike and the Kings of Rhythm and them in the early days have to be off the chain. <laughs> have to be off the chain. Well, in the 60s, when another female, when another singer failed to show up for the Kings of Rhythm recording session, Anna Mae sang the lead on the track titled A Fool in Love. You're just a fool. You know you're in love. What you say? <laughs> Said one more time. Oh, mm. why you treat you like you do when there's such a command? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, that was my version of it. The, the record was then sent to a radio station in New York and was released under the moniker. Ike and Tina Turner. The song became a huge R&B success and soon crossed over to the pop charts. Long before long, the group was touring as the Ike and Tina Turner Review and earning renown, a group re earning renown for their electrifying stage performances. The group also capitalized 
on the success of Food and Love by releasing a string of successful follow-ups, including, including um, I know it's going to work out fine, uh, poor, poor fool, and tra-la-la-la-la. Um, with the popularity growing, Ike and Tina were married in Tijuana, Mexico in 1962. They had a son together, Ronnie, prior to their wedding. They shared four sons in all. Craig, which was her son. Mike, Ike Jr., Michael, and Ronnie, who was their only child together. Uh, Tina had Craig with the Kings of Rhythm saxophonist Raymond Hill when she was 18. Ike adopted Craig, and Tina adopted two of Ike's sons, Ike Jr. and Michael, from a previous marriage. Um, and I think it's, it's really important that people understand that because, you know, Ike gets such a bad name. Um, but he was no more crazier than any other musician out here trying to make it work. Uh, and, um... Say what you want to say. But, uh, you know, back then, it was a whole different time period. It really was. So in 1966, Tina and Ike's success reached new heights when they recorded the album River Deep, Mountain High. With crazy superstar record producer Phil Damn Spector. Feel Madman Spectre. The title track was unsuccessful and I mean in the United States, but became a massive top five hit in England and brought the duo a new fame. Still they became more known for their electrifying live performances without accumulating a ton of corresponding hits because she was a performing artist. In 1969, they toured as the opening act for the Rolling Stones, winning themselves still more fans. Their popularity was rekindled in 1971 with the release of the album Working Together, which featured a renowned slow-to-fast remake of Creedence Clearwater's I Left a Good Job Down in the City. Working for a man every night and day. Y'all remember that one? Proud Mary. Big wheels keep on turning. Proud Mary keep on burning. I said rolling. Rolling. Rolling on the river. And that came the cornerstone of the couple shows, renowned for Tina's vocal delivery, along with the swirling, hand-rolling dance moves uh, from their accompanying vocalettes, the, I mean, uh, vocalists, the Ikeettes. The duo later had a top five UK hit uh, with 1973's Nut Bush City Limits, a rock country soul jam penned by Tina herself with autobiographical elements. Then in 1975, Tina also appeared in her first film, playing the acid queen. <laughs> we don't need another hero. We don't need to know the way home. Oh, yes. Who's Tommy? She also appeared in that. I mean, that was the acid queen. I'm sorry. In uh, Who's Tommy? I'm thinking about Beyond Thunderdome. Wow. Forgot about uh, Tina's movie career. Anyway, despite their success and um, as a musical duo, she looks just like Denise. Tina and Ike's marriage was in shambles. Tina would later reveal that Ike was often physically abusive 
and she even attempted suicide before of before of his abuse because of his abuse by the mid 1970s the couple separated both personally and professionally after an altercation in Dallas which Tina fought back according to a later chapter in her book in 1978, they were officially divorced, with Tina citing Ike's uh, frequent infidelities and increasing drug and alcohol use, in addition to abuse. And y'all know Ike been known to kick a few asses or two, so um, she just had enough. In the years following her divorce, Tina's solo career, solo career got off to a slow start. And according to Tina, when she left Ike, she had 36 cents and a gas station card. To make ends meet and to care for her children, she used food stamps and even clean houses. But she also continued to perform in lower prof, uh, profile venues and made guest appearances on other artist records though not achieving any notably success initially huh, a lot of y'all didn't know she was on food stamps huh? you gotta do what you gotta do in 1973 however uh, Tino's, Tina's solo career finally gained some stream uh, and a full steam ahead when she recorded a remake of Al Green's I'm so in love with you. Whatever you want me to is all right with me. Let's stay together. Noted for a related video in which she appeared in a rag dress between the two dancers. Tina took her remake to the top five on the domestic R&B charts and on the top ten among the UK pop songs. The following year, she exploded back into the record industry when her much-anticipated solo album, Private Dancer, was released to overwhelming critical and popular success. It went on to win four Grammy Awards and eventually sold more than 20 million copies worldwide. Now you see why you never give up? That was the mantra. Private Dancer was a formidable entity in terms of its individual singles. With the empowerment anthem, What's love got to do? got to do with it uh, reaching number one on the US pop charts and earning the Grammy for the record of the year the smooth jazz title track private dancer and uh, what was the other you better be good to me they both reached the top 10 as well by this time Turner was a woman in her mid 40s who was became, becoming even more renowned for her uniquely energetic performances and raspy singing technique, along with her signature look, typically performing in short skirts that expose her famous legs with voluptuous pink-styled hair. Punk-styled hair, I'm sorry. While the late the make the uh, Mad Max movies, they were very successful. The movie um, was a very successful movie. Um, in uh, 1985, Tina returned to the screen, starring opposite of Mel Gibson in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, um, and. The number two pop song, We Don't Need Another Hero. One year later, she uh, published her autobiography, I, Tina, which would later be adapted as one of 1993's films for 
What Love Gotta Do With It, starring Angela Bassett as Tina Turner and Lawrence Fishburne as Ike. Turner's soundtrack for the film, in which she redid classic tracks and offered up the new top 10 hit, I Don't Wanna Fight, would go double platinum. Both Bassett and Fishburne uh, earned Oscar nominations for their roles <laughs> uh, and performances. The year 1986 all saw the release of uh, Turner's second solo album, Break Every Rule, featuring the fun, typical male, chronicling unfulfilled desire with a too brainy romantic interest. <laughs> the track was yet another hit for Turner, reaching number two on the pop, uh, pop charts. Tina... Live in Europe followed in 1988 and won the uh, Grammy for Female Rock Vocal Performance, Foreign Affair, 1989, which included the top 20 single, Simply the Best, Better Than All the Rest. And it outdid Private Dancer in worldwide sales. I didn't know that. Anyway, the following decade, uh, she released um, Wildest Dreams, featuring um, her cover of John Waits' Missing You and 24-7. She also made several recordings for film soundtracks, including a Golden Eye for James Bond, a movie, and he lives in you, the Lion King, too. In 1991, Ike and Tina Turner were inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Ike was unable to attend the ceremony, however, as he was serving time for drug possession. He eventually died of an overdose in uh, 2007. Um, the, but in 2008, the iconic entertainer embarked on her uh, Tina 50th anniversary tour, which became the highest selling ticket show of 2008 and 2009. She would announce that that was going to be her final tour and essentially retire from the music business, save for an occasional appearance. And recording here and there. Um, in 2013, news broke that the 73 year old Turner was engaged to her longtime partner, German record executive Erwin Bach. That July, they were married in Zurich, Switzerland. Only months after Tina had gained her Swiss citizenship, she lived with Bach in Fuschnach near Zurich. In her 70s, Tina experienced several uh, major health issues. Three months after her marriage, uh, she suffered a stroke. And in 2016, she was diagnosed with intestinal cancer. The next year, she had a kidney transplant, and her husband, Doc Bach, was the donor. Wow. Uh, returning to the spotlight in 2018, she was honored with a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award alongside other industry legends like Neil Diamond and Emmy Lou Harris um, to open a year for an eventful one for that 78-year-old. That March, she revealed that she had forgiven her ex-husband for his abusive behavior years ago. 
Um, as an old person, I have forgiven him. Um, but it would not work with him, she said in an interview uh, with the Times of London. He asked for one more tour with me. I said, nope, absolutely not, Ike. Ike wasn't someone you could forgive and allow him back in. Just forgive him and leave it where it was. Then in April, fans were treated to a showcase of her greatest hits with the opening of Tina, the musical at the Walrus Theater in London. It opened also in, on Broadway in New York City on the next fall. Over the summer of 2018, Tina learned that her oldest son, Craig, had been found dead at his home in Studio City, California from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The real estate agent was 59 years old. She wrote about his death, among other things, in her second memoir, My Love Story, that published in October. Three years later, um, Turner was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame again, this time as an individual. Earlier in the year, HBO released a biographical documentary called Tina that featured archival footage and interviews with Tina, Angela Bassett, and Oprah Winfrey, and others. Another honor that year came in the form of a Tina Turner Barbie doll. In 1922, I mean in 2022, uh, Turner's son Ronnie died from colon cancer and cardiovascular disease at 62. And in that post, she wrote, Ronnie, you left the world far too early. So in sorrow, I close my eyes and think of you, my beloved son. At the age of 83, Tina died on May 24th, 2023, at her home in Kushnock, Switzerland, near Zurich. A representative says she died peacefully after a long illness. Yeah, I knew she had been sick. She had previously, remember, suffered a stroke, had cancer, and had a kidney transplant. Well, rest in peace, sister, rest in peace. These are some of her, 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 her quotes that I love. Uh, she said, why did I fall in love so deeply? I think that when you haven't had all that much love at home, and then you find someone you love, everything comes out. And ain't that the truth? I came into this lifetime with a job to finish. I finished it well. I've been told many reasons why for why I lived through what I did. But I have never felt that I deserved it. Hmm. For anyone who's in an abusive relationship I, a relationship, I say this. Go. Nothing can be worse than where you are now. You have to take care of yourself first and then take care of your children. They'll understand later. Trust me. They will understand later. I believe all religion is about touching something inside of yourself. It's all one thing if we would realize this we really could make a change. She said, material things make me happy, but I'm already happy before I acquire these things. 
I'm very happy in Switzerland. I feel at home here. I cannot imagine a better place to live. She said, I will never give in to old age until I become old. And I'm not old yet. <laughs> and she was, she was funny. Very funny. She had a lot of qu uh, quotes that, um, she's really famous for you know she said there comes a point where it's just undignified to be a rock and roll star <laughs> she's I believe that if you just stand up and go life will open up for you there is no strict reg regimen that says when you are in your late 40s, you cannot wear a mini dress. <laughs> Rest in peace, Sister Tina. You have made your transition. Well done. Well done. Good and faithful servant. You fulfilled your purpose. And you've left us a legacy of and just a, 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 a um, plethora of music to listen to. Rest in power, sister. <laughs>